This is Dave the Gardener on Actual Radio. Hello and uh, welcome again. Well, July's with us already and what a hot month we had in June. And one thing what was highlighted in June because of the hot weather is how much plants suffered from dehydration. Dehydration on plants is something most people don't think about. But if you've got plants growing in containers uh, and they go short of water for a while, they will dehydrate. Their leaves will suddenly start shrinking and, and they could even die off if left for a long time. Now, July could be a similar month. Hopefully, um, it will be. And, of course, it's a very important month. So the most important thing about July is if you've got plants in containers, especially hanging baskets and bedding plants in pots, is make sure you keep them well watered. Now, if they're in pots and and baskets, of course, you know, you might have to water them every day and just check. Um, Don't water them every day just uh, by doing it make sure the weather is 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 right if it's dry and warm then of course they'll need watering if it gets cloudy and cool then don't water them but it is important to do them at the right time as well watering early in the morning if you're working give them a good watering before you go to work or when you come home early evening never water them in the heat of the day because it will just dehydrate and evaporate very very quickly and of course if you get water on the leaves of plants you could get sun scorch on the leaves where the water is heated up by the sun and it actually burns the leaves of your plants You know, the one thing I like about July is the roses are in their full glory at the moment, although June, late June and July, they are superb. When they start fading around about the second week of July, that's the time to start thinking about deadheading. Deadheading is a word you'll hear quite a bit this time. Deadheading is taking off the old faded faded roses and you cut off them flowers and take about six inches of the stem. What this does is encourages new flowers to come on because you want your roses to flower right through the summer months. So cut them off as they fade. Don't just take off the dead flower. Take that six inches of stem which will allow new shoots to come on and new flowers. The most important thing also to check for your roses is mildew and black spot. Mildew and black spot are a couple of diseases roses get quite regular and it can actually make the rose foliage look very, very poor and it can affect the actually way they perform. So, you know, if you haven't already done it, um, go out there on a, a fairly cool day and spray with a rose fungicide just to make sure of the fact that, you know, your roses stay healthy right through the summertime. You know, the one thing I like is hanging baskets, and it seems to be they're the most popular thing ever nowadays. And every house you go past seems to have a beautiful hanging basket hanging out the front door. And of course, it's one of those things which, although they look fantastic, they need a fair bit of work to be done on them. You know, watering, of course, is the most important thing. And hanging baskets can actually, on a warm day, be watered at least twice a day. They do dry out. Don't forget, you've got this thing hanging up in midair, maybe on a breezy day, being blown around. And so it dries out very quickly. So watering is so important. And because you have to water so regular, maybe twice a day, feeding becomes also very important. And you may have to feed them at least once or twice a week. And any fading blooms just pick up especially on fuchsias which is one of my favorite plants and they look stunning hanging baskets just make sure you pick any faded flowers off to keep that basket flowering right the way through into the autumn months and they will do that if looked after veg garden is 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 so important in july and more and more people are growing their own and it's a great way of getting a bit of exercise as well being out there especially if you've got allotment or a garden plot um, for your veg important things to look at and and you know I, I won't apologize for mentioning watering again because when it comes to vegetables watering is so important simply because if your vegetables go short of water when they're really growing strongly as they are now they'll go what we call they'll go they'll bolt which is basically going to seed and suddenly you know 
the plant will stop growing and you get the seed head come flying out the middle of your cabbage or even your onions and it makes the whole thing useless and that's purely because the plant goes short of water. You know what, one of my favourite vegetables has got to be runner beans. I just love runner beans and they're coming into their uh, own at the moment and they'll keep about mid-month, they'll be ready to start picking. And you must remember with runner beans, pick them when they're young. Don't pick them when they go poddy. A lot of people wait until they grow quite long and they start seeing the bean inside appearing through the skin. That's not the time to leave it to. Wait until they're nice and fresh and young and pick them when you need them. Keep The more you pick, the more you'll get. And that's the one thing about a lot of veg, especially runner beans. The more you pick, the more you'll get right the way through. Now, tomatoes, and I, I, I can't go without talking about tomatoes because you know tomatoes are are excellent one of the favorite veg and they're very healthy and good for you so you know tomatoes if you're growing tomatoes and you're growing them for the first time in a pot and I I normally grow three or four tomatoes uh, in a container and, and they're great the main thing to remember apart from watering just keep them slightly moist don't let them dry out um, if you let them dry out and then give them a good soak in, you get what they call blossom end rot, where the tomato looks nice and red and you pick it and it's got this horrible black patch underneath. That's called blossom end rot. That's because you allowed it to dry out at one stage. So they must be kept damp all the time and fed with a tomato feed quite regular. Now the big secret is to get lots of tomatoes is allow each plant only four or five trusses. That's four or five bunches, if you like, of tomatoes. And once it gets those just take out the growing tip at the top allowing all the energy then to go into producing your lovely tomatoes and and they are you will not be a tomato picked off your own plant the flavor is 10 times better than anything you'll buy in the supermarket take it from me it's true second early potatoes if you're growing potatoes they take up a fair bit of room but a lot of people do grow them they're coming into maturity now. The one secret of second early potatoes, only dig the ones you need each day. They don't keep very well, so don't try and dig up the whole lot and take them indoors and put them in a bag. They won't keep very well in the heat. It's best to dig just the ones you need and, and use them on a daily basis. And if you've got a greenhouse, it's probably like an oven in there over the last few weeks. So just remember, greenhouses can get very, very hot. And I'm amazed how many people do not put greenhouse whitening on the glass to cool down the greenhouse. They think that you need the sun to go through the glass to ripen your tomatoes, to grow your cucumbers. Unfortunately, if you don't put greenhouse shading on your glass, the sun will actually burn your plants to pieces it will like putting a giant magnifying glass on your plants and see what happens it will just burn them so if you haven't done it you know it's not too late it's very cheap you can buy it at garden centers you mix it up in a bucket and just put it over the outside of the glass and the plants will grow great but it will stop that sun scorch and if you're growing cucumbers also cucumbers nowadays the modern variety all female cucumbers grow like bilio you only need one plant take it from me keep picking them when they're young and you'll have lots and lots and lots of cucumbers more than enough as you can actually keep and make sure also that you water down the path if you've got a concrete path or a shingle path that does help um, keep the heat down and make sure the doors and windows are left open most of the day to allow the ventilation and finally one of the favorite jobs I like doing this time of year is cuttings great time plants for free you can't go wrong this time of the year you can take cuttings from any plant you like in the garden shrubs fuchsias you name it perennials any little plant you think you'd like some cuttings small side shoot cut it just below a pair of leaves a bit of compost in a pot a little bit of perlite you can buy quite readily just cut the two leaves off the bottom don't even need anything just water it in pencil make a hole put it in put your cuttings as many as you can inside this pot most important thing polythene bag over the top elastic band at the bottom of the pot leave it within about four or five weeks those cuttings would have all rooted you don't need to take the bag off 
and that's a mistake a lot of people do a trick taking the bag off checking to see if they're rooted take it from me leave the polythene bag on for four or five weeks you won't need no watering because the condensation builds up in the bag is enough and you'll have plants galore for nothing cheerio i'll see you next month Email your gardening questions to Dave the Gardener at actualradio.com.